So earlier I was doing some research on the Christmas Tree Lady case and one of the rule outs uh, during the time, between the time that she was discovered dead and the time that they were able to discover who she was through DNA, they did what they call rule outs. They would uh, compare her to other missing people and try to rule them out. And one of the people that was ruled out was this lady named Judith Ann Gurren, G-E-U-R-I-N. And I wanted to talk a little bit about her, see what I could find about her. She's been missing since January the 28th, 1991 from South Point, New York. She's, um, at the time that she went missing, she was 45, 5 foot 2 and 180 pounds. She was last seen wearing a, lo a large, square-shaped platinum and diamond ring and a unique necklace with a floating opal. Um, she was thought to have been wearing a sweater and matching pants. They say that she almost always wore turtleneck shirts, but they didn't have a description of the clothing. She was a white female with blonde hair and hazel eyes, and she always wore eyeglasses. She is legally blind, and she always wore eyeglasses with large plastic frames. She has a large scar on her stomach and three cesarean operation scars. Her nickname is Judy. She was last seen in Sodus Point, New York, on January the 28th, 1991. She lived with her boyfriend, Curtis Michael Pucci on Margareta Road. She has never been heard from again. All of her possessions, including her trailer, were left behind and were later sold. She was an employee at a restaurant. Gurin was involved in an abusive relationship at the time that she went missing. The month before her disappearance, she told her family and friends that she was planning to leave and move back in with her children. They lived about 200 miles away. She was very upset during this conversation and said that she was embarrassed that she had made the mistake of becoming involved with this man. This was the last time that she ever spoke to her relatives. A photo of her boyfriend is posted with this case summary. He is currently incarcerated on unrelated charges serving a 15-year sentence for assaulting his roommate with a hammer. Judith's daughter believes that he murdered her mother, although he has never been charged in connection with her case. Her husband had died suddenly in 1988, and she had begun to drink heavily and left all four of her children in the care of her oldest child, who was then a teenager. She always stayed in contact with her children. Authorities initially believed she left town on her own to avoid trouble as she had been charged with forging checks and driving while intoxicated. She missed her court dates and after her disappearance a warrant was issued for her arrest and her boyfriend told investigators that she had gone to Florida to escape the charges. Her daughter reported her missing in 2006 after she found out the paper trail of her mother had stopped in 1991. Pucci is considered a person of interest. He has refused to cooperate with the investigation and her case remains unsolved. So one thing I want to kind of note about this woman is that she got married to her children's father when she was 18, and she lived with him for her entire adult life. Um, she stayed home and took care of her kids while her husband was a police officer. Her husband was 15 years older than her when they married. So basically, she lived her entire life as this homemaker and wife, and then her husband died suddenly from a heart attack. 
she did get some life insurance money and money from a pension plan from his time as a law enforcement officer and they said that in the beginning she did try to uh, do some positive things with her life. She had planned to enroll in college and she joined Parents Without Partners and she was trying to get help in, in that way from other people, support system. But she met this man, she began drinking and it was almost like this was all she knew to do was just to throw everything into this abusive relationship with this man who was much younger than she was. He was probably flattering her, telling her it's time for her to live her life now. And of course he was probably just after this money, basically. And as her daughter believes, once the money ran out, he had no use for her anymore. She began this relationship with this man and this um, Curtis Pucci. She ended up leaving her children behind, taking all of her money. She ended up spending all of her money. And then she ended up getting into trouble for writing a bad check. And uh, some people and the police kind of just brushed her disappearance off as someone who just ran away because she was fearful of going to jail which really probably would have been the best thing for her at that point because she was drinking heavily, she was in this abusive relationship with this man, and she was wanting to go back home to her children. And this was the time when she disappeared. And some of you may know this to be a fact that when a, an abused woman, I will say an abused person because it can also be a man, but when someone's in an abusive relationship and they are trying to leave, that is the most dangerous time for them. Because as long as they're staying in that home and putting up with the abuse and being quiet and not sharing it with the rest of the world, the abuser knows that they have control over that person. When they begin to lose that control is when they snap. And this man knew that she was going to she she was probably paying the rent on this trailer that they were living in, and I believe that she actually bought the trailer. And because they said that he had sold whatever belongings she had left behind, he had sold. Um, but I wanted to read this part. Oh, the daughter, Amy, she decided in 2013 to reach out to this Curtis Pucci, who was at that time in prison serving a sentence for assaulting someone else. So, 2006, a missing persons case was officially launched, even though this woman had not been seen or heard from since 1991. Her driver's license had never been renewed. She had filed no kinds of claims for social security or any other kind of financial trail her daughter decides to write a letter to this Curtis Pucci who's in prison on another crime. So here is the story. There's not been a day that has gone by that I don't ache for my mom, she said. She wrote this letter to Curtis Pucci and I have had a lifelong I have had a lifetime of struggling because of losing my mother at the age of eighteen. I have children that she will never know. I know, my mo I know my mom wasn't the easiest person to live with and didn't always make the best choices. Kurt, I'm begging you to please help me bring my mom home and put an end to this. I have lived with this all these years. I'm hoping that you will write me back, maybe even agree to see me and talk face to face. So here was his response, which was extremely narcissistic, extremely uh, just adding salt to the wound of this, of this family. So here's his response. He sent her a story from a folk tale called Feathers in the Wind. 
the story is about a, a man who tarnishes the name of the town's wise man. The man goes to the wise man and asks for forgiveness, to which the wise man says to him, he will forgive him if he cuts up a feather pillow and scatters the feathers into the wind. The man carries out the act and returns the following day to ask the wise man if he is now forgiven. The wise man once again tells him, the only way he'll forgive him for slandering his name is if he will completely collect all of the scattered feathers. So basically, it would be it would have been impossible for the man to know how many feathers to collect and where they all went to in this wind. So basically, the wise man was just saying to this man, I'm going to keep you jumping through hoops forever in in an attempt to seek my forgiveness. And this was what this man wrote back to this daughter of this woman who she just wanted to know if there was any information he could provide to help her. Poochie directly addresses Amy in all capital letters. Go pick up your feathers and we both may forgive you. So basically what he's saying is he's leading her to believe that her mother is still alive and that her mother is so angry and upset with her daughter that she will never forgive her and making the daughter feel guilty. Poochie has never written to Amy again and he has never spoken to anyone including members of law enforcement about Judith's disappearance. I believe personally that she let him know that she was leaving. She'd already spoken to her daughter and her daughter had told her to come back home and that they could start working on improving her life and getting her out of this abusive relationship and that she could build a relationship back with her children and grandchildren at that point. And he, being a narcissist, being an abuser, just decided that he was not going to let her leave. And I believe that's what happened to her. If you have any information, please contact Wayne County Sheriff in New York at 315-946-9711. Woman's disappearance baffles de deputies 25 years later. The Wayne County Sheriff's Office continues to look into a missing person case that dates back 25 years. Wayne County Sheriff Barry Verts said in a statement on Monday that deputies are still looking for any information in the disappearance of Judith A. Gurren, who was reported missing from a small lakeside village in 1991. When people disappear, they tend to do it all at once, but not Judith. She began to fade from her existence gradually. It all began in 1988 after her husband Joseph died of a heart attack. In the stages of grief, Judith became known to drink. She lost a piece of herself among the liquor bottles that began to clutter her colonial-style four-bedroom home just north of Albany. She disengaged from her family gatherings and gave up her motherly obligations. She eventually left all of her children behind for a new man. Amy was only 17 years old when her father died. She reshaped her plans for her future and eventually took charge of caring for her three younger brothers. She was angry with her mother, but tried to understand and believe that her mom would return one day. Then her mother just simply disappeared. Weekly phone calls to her children stopped abruptly in 1991. Although the local police initially dismissed her theories, she has convinced them they should investigate her mother's disappearance as a murder. They are now interviewing people who may have more information. No one was even looking for Judy until the fall of last year when we received a phone call from Amy, said a detective with the Wayne County Sheriff's Office. 
Now, in my heart, I think it's 99% chance that this was homicide. Before Amy began her search, she combed through her memories of her mother that she thought she knew. When I say this woman didn't drink when I was growing up, I mean she didn't even have a glass of wine at Christmas. Nor did her parents appear to be unhappy with each other or their lives. Her father worked long hours as a sergeant for the Albany County Sheriff's Department. His overtime pay was enough to keep the family in an upper-middle-class existence. Judith stayed home and took care of her house and her children. I never thought that our family was unhappy, said Amy. When my father died in 1988, he left more than $250,000 in life insurance and pensions to my mother at the time, who was only 42 years old. Judith's life began a downward spiral. Her daughter had to grow up fast. Instead of college, she attended a cosmetology program for eight months so that she could begin to earn a living. Judith sold the family's home in 1989 and bought a two-family duplex in a greedy neighborhood in nearby Troy. Judith had the movers put her own belongings in a separate truck and told her children that she would be moving in with her new boyfriend. Amy filed for custody of her three younger brothers that fall and was awarded custody in 1990. I was angry and depressed, she said. I was only 20 years old, and now I was a mother to three children. After a few months, Judith and the man she was living with moved almost 200 miles away to Sodus Point, a small Lake Ontario community near Rochester, New York. By then, she had spent all of the money her husband had left her, and she and her new boyfriend lived in a trailer. She found a job at a motel in a restaurant nearby. Before long, her daughter said that Judith had run into trouble with the law. She was charged with writing two bad checks and driving while intoxicated. In one of the last phone calls with her daughter, she sounded really upset. She said, I feel really stupid. If you come back, Amy told her, we can start all over again. But she never heard from her mother again. Amy contacted the authorities who said that her mother probably fled to avoid prosecution. Frustrated by lack of help from the police, she began to do her own search. She has continued on and off for the last 16 years while forging a new career with FedEx, raising her own two sons and getting married. Like her mother, she married a policeman with the Albany County Sheriff's Department. As she began to gather information, a disturbing portrait emerged. Amy found perhaps 20 people who knew her mother. Some said that Mr. Pucci had a had abused Judith and that he had sold her jewelry and sold her trailer shortly after her disappearance. She seemed really depressed, but like she wanted out, but she didn't know how to get out, said her friend Tina, who was a former bartender at the, ho at the hotel where she worked. Last summer, Amy pressed the police and gave them her notes. They opened a missing persons investigation and interviewed many of the people. Progress has still been slow. We don't have the resources to jump in to this case. Investigators interviewed Mr. Pucci, who is serving a 12-year sentence for assault and criminal possession of a weapon. He declined to answer questions and asked them to speak to his lawyer. The police have not named him as a suspect in Judith's disappearance. Amy says her number one goal is to find out what happened to her mother. She would love to find her mother's remains. She has called medical examiners around the state to ask about any unidentified bodies that may have been found that would match those of her mother. Even if no one is ever charged, she said, I would just like to bury my mother next to my father. I've always been angry, but now I have more empathy for her. 
I just want someone to give us back our mother. And that's pretty much all I could find on this case as of that was 2016. The search for a missing woman last seen in 1991 is still active. The daughter of Judith Gurren, who was last seen in 1991, tells us that she got a tip over the weekend that led deputies to search an area in Sodus Point, close to where her mother had been living. She says she's grateful for the tip, adding that she is hopeful her mother's remains will be found. Thanks for watching.